been talking about fighting the good fight of faith. In 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter and the 12th verse, it says that, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. And he goes on to talk about how Jesus confessed in front of Pilate when he's facing death and said he came into the world to bear witness to the truth and he stood up and his faith was unfazed and you and I need to have unmoved hearts and unfazed faith in the face of whatever we encounter in this life and because of that there will be times you will have to fight. You will have to resist and push back against things that are trying to pressure you into doubting and fearing and giving up and not trusting God and stopping your walk with Him and stopping pursuing His plan. You're going to have to have and find some strength in the greater one that's inside you, huh? And resist and stand. And having done all to stand, stand. to stand. It's not a fist fight. It's not a flesh fight. It's a spirit fight and it's a faith fight. Read it out loud with me. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Go with me please over to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians 6. I'm reading out of the complete Jewish Bible, the CJB. Finally, grow powerful in union with the Lord, in union with His mighty strength. That ought to enable you to fight a good fight. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you may be able to stand against. Now, a lot of people at this point, they would, they would think that reads power of the devil. And people, they, they fixate on the devil's power. But it doesn't say the power of the devil. Hmm? What does it say? The wiles of the devil. And here this translation says the deceptive tactics of the adversary. And this is one of the big things we, we must understand. Or elsewise we won't even be fighting the good fight. We'll be like 1 Corinthians 9 talked about beating the air shadow boxing. You can think you're fighting and you're not hitting anything. You're just beating the air. And so in order to not just be beating the air, you got to know what we're fighting against specifically. Somebody said the devil or devil. The devil. And, <laughs> and what? Oh, power of the devil. A lot of times people... <laughs> They just have a, a real hazy idea about the whole thing, and it's not reality. The devil is real. His cohorts, evil spirits are real. But there's, we should have zero fear of them. None. If we know the truth, we won't be afraid of them. And yet, we will take this very seriously what they are doing against us on a daily basis. They are bringing deceptive ideas and thoughts and suggestions and feelings and temptations to us continually. And we need to take that very seriously and be on our watch and on our guard. Not yelling and screaming and flailing our arms at some imaginary Hollywood dragon. <laughs> some big drooling monster with horns and teeth. Hmm? That's why a lot of people just, their concept is of the devil is Hollywood and, and they're just scared and they don't want to hear about the devil. They don't want to talk about the devil and people get in the ditch on one side or the other. Either they want to act like there is no devil and never talk about these things or they get in the ditch on the other side of the road and they talk about the devil all the time and they're scared of him. Right. Neither of those is true. What, should, what do we need armor for? What do we need weaponry for? What do we need the strength of God for? To stand against 
the deceptive tactics of the adversary. He is a liar, he is a deceiver, and he is really, really good at it. Hmm? I said he's good at it. And he is so good at it that mu much of the world is deceived and don't realize it. They don't know it. They don't know it's him. Don't even believe he exists. And yet he is leading them around by the nose. One of his favorite lies is that he doesn't exist. And all these thoughts and feelings that you're dealing with, you just brought up, you, you conjured on your own. <laughs> but no, the enemy will bring deception to you to try to get you to believe it. How would you know it's a lie? Ephesians says the light makes everything manifest. How would you know something's a lie? Only in the light of the truth would you realize that's not true. And what if you're ignorant of the word like millions are? Then you're easily deceived, easily duped. And the problem with being deceived is you don't know you're deceived. If you knew you were deceived, you wouldn't be deceived, right? Deceived means you are believing that a lie is true. You think it's right. You think it's true. Maybe you think it's God. Maybe you think it's the Bible. But it's not. And so you're believing a lie. And this is the thing we are to be, like Peter said, vigilant. On the watch. On our guard about day and night. Everything you hear, everything you see, every thought and feeling that comes to you, you need to challenge it and say, is this true? Where is this coming from? Is this true? Is this right? How do I know it's true? Aren't you glad we got the book? The book that reveals the truth. And we can check it against this book. Is that right? And we got the, the author of the book, who's the spirit of truth living inside us 24-7. And the spirit of truth, Jesus said, will teach you and guide you into all the truth. And in the light of that truth, you can go, that ain't right. Why? Because the truth says this. That can't be right. I'm not going to believe that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to do that. Why? Because it's contrary to the truth. But we need, that's why you need to read your chapter every day. Is that right? Yes. Monday through Friday. And yes. Others besides why you need to come to church, yes. right? Be in every meeting that you're supposed to be in. Because if you don't need it today, you're going to need it tomorrow. Yes. Something's going to come up. And you do not need to be in the dark or ignorant of the, uh, of the truth of God's word or of the enemy's devices. Let me fast forward a little bit to something else here. That goes right along with this. You look at it again in Ephesians 6. He mentions four categories of devil power or authority or work. He said, we are not struggling, verse 12, against human beings, but against the rulers or King James's principalities and powers, which is the word for authorities authorities and world powers are rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. He mentions four ranks, if you will, four categories of spirits of darkness and how they rule and control men in the world through their influence. Now, we've already covered some of this, so if you weren't with us, go back and, and, and get, get the downloads or the, the CDs or DVDs. But we looked at how 1 John says the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. And 2 Corinthians 4 says Satan is the god of this world. And that's because that is true, so many 
churchgoers are wrong when they say God is in control. And they're trying to say that everything that's happening on this planet is somehow the will of God. And that God, is God controlling people being destroyed through war and disease and innocence being devastated? Is that, and people say, well, you just shouldn't question the uh, providence of God. Well, no, that's one of those lies that we've been talking about. Why? If, if you believe that, then you're not going to resist it. And the enemy just walks right in, steals, kills, and destroys. But no, it's not true. The truth is, in heaven, God is in complete control. And they got no disease, and no war, and no crime, and no lack, no disease. Is that right? And there's coming a time. When the kingdoms of this world, they shall become the kingdoms of our Lord. And he is going to be in complete control down here. And when that happens, there's going to be no more curse. Come on, have you read about it? No more crying, no more dying. But that hasn't happened yet. What's going on right now is that Satan is the God of this world. And he is controlling most of it through these uh, evil spirits that are mentioned right here through principalities, authorities, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies is the literal translation, in the heavenlies. Now, I made reference to my father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin Sr., who's in heaven now, and how the head of the church he shared appeared to him back in in Oklahoma in 1952 and talked to him for an hour and a half about the devil, demons, evil spirits, how they operate. And he said how they control people and how they can affect even Christians, listen to this, if they allow them to. Did you hear this? Don't miss that part. If they allow them to. Remember 1 Peter said, Uh, The devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking, devouring anybody he wants to? No. Seeking whom he may devour. And what's the next verse say? Whom resist. There it is again. Resist him steadfast in the faith. What does it mean resist steadfast? That means do it today, do it this evening, do it tomorrow. Keep on resisting. We never stop resisting the devil. But I want to read to you what he said, the head of the church said to him about these things. And I want you to listen carefully. And would you be open to making some changes if you need to? Hmm? I'm convinced the devil has laughed at us and mocked us. He and his cohorts because of how foolish most Christians have been in dealing with him. They have done things imagining that they're fighting the devil and and said things and preached things that have zero effect on him. And he could care less about. And I want that I want that to stop with any of us. I want us to quit playing games, right? And get rid of any religious misconceptions, any old or any new ideas of men that are not right, that are not the Word of God, would would you be open to that? Then say it out loud with me. Father God, God, open my eyes. eyes. Help me to see see the truth, truth. reality Reality. about the devil devil. and demons, Demons. what they are, what they're not, not. how they work, how they they don't. don't. Show me what's you, God, and what's not you. What's true and what's not true, I ask for it. In Jesus' name, I believe I receive it and I thank you for it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. How many would believe there's a lot for us to learn about these things? And how many think there's a bunch of junk that people imagine? A bunch of goofy ideas. We want to be delivered from all the goofiness. 
You? You want to be? I want zero goofiness in my <laughs> spiritual life. Now, I'm quoting and reading from Brother Hagin's book, Brother Kenneth E. Hagin's book, I Believe in Visions. It's in chapter 4 where he talks about the title of it's How Satan Influences Lives Today. And he told the story of how he's holding a meeting in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, 1952. And after the service, he and the pastor and their family knelt down to pray. And when he did, he said it was like he knelt down in a cloud. He was in the spirit and he saw the Lord. And the Lord talked to him for an hour and a half about the devil and demons, evil spirits, how to deal with them. And I'm just going to read you an excerpt from this. He, he said the Lord told him, he, he said, I'm quoting now what he said the Lord said. Now if the head of the church said this, should we take it seriously? Yes. You should examine every part of it with the scripture. And one of the, one of the things that's so outstanding, if you read that passage, Jesus gave him scripture every part of this. Yes. Scripture after scripture after scripture. Some of it he, he didn't want to accept. And, and he said, you're going to have to give me at least two or three witnesses. And the Lord said, I'll give you four. There you go. Wow. And at one point he said, Lord, I've read the New Testament, uh, parts of it 150 times. And if there's anything in there like that, I've never seen it. He said, the Lord smiled and said, son, there's a lot in there you hadn't seen. Wow. <laughs> wow. So if this is the head of the church, and he said this, and, and the scriptures front and back about it, should we take it seriously? He said, the Lord said this, there are four divisions, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and wicked spirits in high places or in the heavenlies. The highest spirits with which you uh, have to deal are the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, Jesus told Brother Hagin three times in that vision that we don't directly deal with the wicked spirits in heavenly places. Three times. Hear how quiet it just got. Because there's, there's a number of people who imagine that they are personally wrestling with wicked spirits in the heavenlies. And Jesus said in this, we don't, we don't deal with those. The highest type we deal with are the rulers of the darkness of this world here on, on the earth. Now, if you think otherwise, you know what you need for your, your belief? Scripture. Scriptures. Right. Let me go on reading. He said, the Lord said to me, these are the highest types of demons with which you have to deal on earth, the rulers of the darkness of this world. They rule all unsaved people and all who are in darkness. They rule over them and dominate them. That is why people do and say the things they don't intend to. That's why some good people say, I would never do anything like that. And before a year has passed, they have done something worse. This is because they are dominated by the rulers of the darkness of this world. They're in the kingdom of darkness. And whether you want to admit it or not, even your close friends and relatives or whoever it may be, if they're unsaved, they're dominated by these spirits who are rulers of the darkness of this world. How are they dominating them? By these thoughts. And these suggestions and these feelings and folks are just yielding to them. Right? And, that, and that's why sometimes people, they have, they have such remorse, they think, how in the world did I do that? Why did I do that? But they just acted on those thoughts and those feelings. It's always one of the rulers of the darkness of this world that possesses a person. They rule not only those who are within the darkness of this world, but they tell the principalities what to do. The principalities rule over the powers and tell them what to do. The lowest type of demons have very little to do. They do very little thinking on their own and are told what to do. Now among, among other things, he, the Lord said, I'll show you how these spirits get a hold of people when they are allowed in. Did you hear that? They, don't be afraid of the devil. He cannot just come and do something to you. You have to let him in. You have to yield to it. He can't force you or me or anybody. But the problem is people are yielding to it and don't even realize what they're doing. And, and we, last time we talked about how that uh, 
he showed him that woman and how the enemy came to her. I'll just read it to you again. He said, the Lord said, I'll show you how these evil spirits get a hold of people when they're allowed in. And he said, suddenly in the vision, I saw a woman. I immediately recognized her as being the former wife of a minister. I had been introduced to her and her husband on one occasion. I shook hands with them. Other than that, I didn't know either of them. I'd had no communication with either of them in any way. I, had, I knew she had left her husband. The Lord said, this woman was a child of mine. She was in the ministry with her husband. She was filled with the Spirit. Even the gifts of the Spirit were operating in her life. One day an evil spirit came to her and whispered in her ear. Now, is she being attacked? What's, what's it time for her to do? It's time for her to fight, right? Which the way you do it is to resist. And he said the spirit came and whispered to her ear. Now, is she, is she seeing something physical? No. She's not hearing an audible voice. This is coming against her mind. Can you see this? And yet it's, it's, it's real. It's spiritual. And evil spirits involved. Not something to be afraid of, but something to take seriously and resist and not let it in your thinking. And he said, uh, the spirit said to her, whispered in her ear, you are a beautiful woman. You could have had fame and popularity and wealth, but you've been cheated in life by following in the Christian walk. Now, friend, you will notice this again and again. The devil will try to get you in self-pity. It is one of his major avenues in. If he can get you to feeling sorry for your life, what, what's he telling her? You've been robbed. You've been robbed. They don't appreciate you. They don't appreciate you. Your gifts your calling, who you are. You, you're an amazing specimen of a woman. You're so beautiful. Your husband, he doesn't appreciate you. This little church, your talent, your singing ability, it's on par with the best on the stages of the world. You could have fame. You could be, people could be working for you and looking up to you and, and you could have money and, and instead of that little dinky house that you're living in, you could have the, you've been robbed. You've been cheated. You've been mistreated. Why am I hollering about this, guys? Friend, be on your guard against anything that tries to tempt you to feel sorry for yourself and, and listen to that you've been cheated. You've been mistreated. You've been, they, they should have done this for you. They should have given you this. They should have given you this place. Friend, you need to treat that like a giant rattlesnake in your bed. Hmm? Because it's deadly. It is deadly. We trust this message has ministered to you. Faith Life Church has two locations, in Branson, Missouri and Sarasota, Florida. Service times in Branson are Friday nights at 6.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Service times in Sarasota are Friday nights at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 10.00. For more information, please visit our websites, flcbranson.org and flcsarasota.org, or call us at 417-334-9233.